funny, I'm actually recording this part at the end of my walk. I'm almost done with three miles here. And I wanted to open up with a shout out to a friend of mine, or for actually for a friend of mine, to a friend of mine I haven't met yet. I got a comment from my, my buddy I grew up with in Deerfield Beach, Jason Clark. He was telling me that a friend of his was doing this new diet and Jason told him that he should check out uh, my buddy Dante's stuff on YouTube. And he said, your buddy, Ferrigno, get out of here. He didn't believe that that was who it was. Well, yep, me and Jason grew up together. Walking around down some of the same streets, causing some of the same trouble. <laughs> this is a shout out to Mike Brown of Deerfield Beach. I'm glad you're here, brother. Thanks for checking out the channel and I hope the changes I inspire do you good. Well, good morning. Not gonna be much of a sunrise today. For those of you who have been joining me on my walks for well over a year now, uh, we have a very overcast sky today in Central Florida. So I'm just hoping to get it, get back home before the rain comes. But I got a few things I'm gonna go with you, go over with you periodically as I double check some questions I got on the channel. Just wanted to be able to share some some insights with you that I I realize when when you guys ask me questions. Sometimes I'm surprised you don't know the answer because I've answered a lot of them many times But I'm just thankful you guys keep coming back to watch and I realize the way YouTube works kind of requires me to Give updates periodically on some of the questions that I've already answered because it doesn't recommend all my older older videos But I encourage any of you who are willing to do a new diet they that are interested in following the way I've done lion diet to go back and watch my playlist on my journey because I really go into a, a lot of detail on the early parts of being on this diet that being said let's take a look at a few viewer questions this may seem like a funny one to start with but it's a question I get asked a lot so I guess it's important to folks coming from schnauzer world 660 what is your height I am six foot one I'm not sure what that has to do with anything. Maybe people are trying to figure out what my BMI is. Uh, currently, my weight is 185. I did find that drinking milk allowed me to put on a little more weight. So, you know, that reminds me. I've seen a few other questions asking about how to put on weight, and I didn't think about saving those to go over with you, so I can't give credit to who asked. But I can tell you that when I started adding milk, I started gaining weight. Now I've cut back on the milk because I don't really need the extra weight. I'm happy with my body the way it is. I found that the milk was really addictive too. <laughs> I was drinking almost a gallon a day there for a while. So you gotta be careful when you start adding things back. I know for me, because I've talked about being an, an addictive personality where it's very easy for me to get addicted to things. I'm thankful to be addicted to things that are healthy for me now. But uh, you gotta be careful when you add certain foods back you start uh, reversing gains that you've had. I still drink milk, I just keep it to a minimum now. And I'm glad I can even have that control because that's been a really difficult thing for me to do is to, is to have control over anything that I get addicted to. Usually I just find that I have to let it go, whatever it is, altogether. In this case, I haven't let milk go. I have just reduced the intake tremendously. I think I let a half gallon last three days most recently. So it's just a, it's a little treat now instead of something that I was indulging too much. The other question comes from Bearded Ginger 9175. What vitamins do you take on this diet? You know, for the first year and a half I was on Lion Diet, I didn't take any vitamins. I only started adding any kind of supplements at all after the first year and a half because I had in, blood work done and it showed that my vitamin D was low and then on the recommendation of a pharmacist who watches my channel i decided to check my iodine levels also and i did two different tests for iodine and i showed deficient on both tests so i've since started taking vitamin d3 with k2 and i also take an iodine supplement and i'll put links to those in the description if you're interested in knowing about them i don't i'm not a big believer in supplements in general because almost all supplements 
just go right through you. You don't absorb them. You wound up peeing them out. And I haven't had a chance to really see how the iodine in the D3 has been doing for any test changes because I haven't gone back for another blood test and I haven't done any more urine tests for the iodine or even a patch test. But I will do one of those soon. I realize that you guys are interested in knowing about supplements. The reason I don't advertise a lot of different products is because there's not very many products I believe in. But if I use a product and people want to know what it's like, I don't mind listing the Amazon Associates link in the, in the videos that I make. But I don't do this for my primary source of income. I'm, I'm working stiff. So I'm just thankful to have the opportunity to share this information with people and help them get their life together and get their health together. But I am also thankful for the fact that I can have a bit of a side job doing this. This question comes from Moondehi280. Do you use electrolytes? Up until like the first 18 months, the only electrolytes that I used were salt. And people say, well, salt's not an electrolyte. Sodium and chloride are both electrolytes. So it's definitely an electrolyte. And when you do lion diet, or really any strict carnivore diet, you're gonna be deprived of electrolytes if you're not adding some somewhere. Salt is a great preserver for meat, and it's also great at bringing the flavor out for meat. So I use Redmond salt. I only use Redmond real salt. In the beginning, I used Himalayan pink salt. I knew table salt was not a good option. And people who keep asking about salt, all I can say is don't use table salt. If you can get Himalayan pink salt or some other sea salt, you're going to do a lot better. The reason I use Redmond, Redmond salt comes from an ancient seabed and it doesn't have all the pollutants that come from current seas where they get salt from. A lot of the waters where they get the salt from, there's boats that have oil and gas coming out of their boats into the water. So I like to get something that has not been polluted as badly by a lot of our modern uh, maritime navigation. I also use Redmond Relight for the last six months because I started becoming a whole lot more active about six months or so ago, maybe nine months now, I don't know, eight months, something like that. I've, I've been doing so much more exercise since I've been working this job that I've, I've been working where I work a graveyard shift. I mean, it is, it is enough to keep anybody busy. Right. Renee B6702 asks, how does your wife react to your new way of living? My husband is not supportive. It makes it very difficult. You know, initially, she was just thankful that I was trying something because I was getting pretty hard to live with, with all I was going through with the pain and the decision making on the addictions and things like that. Now, your situation might be a whole lot different. I didn't start doing lion diet to lose weight. If you're doing it to lose weight, they might feel like, ah, oh, this is not a safe way to do it. And you're gonna hear that from people no matter how long you do this diet. It amazes me how often I hear my mother will have people tell me that people knew me in Georgia will be asking about how I'm doing, that they're worried about me. And I think if they're so worried about me, why aren't they watching this channel to see what I'm talking about when it comes to this diet? Because I'm in the best shape of my life. But still people are gonna, it's harder to convince people that they're wrong about something than it is to convince somebody or just to teach somebody a truth. And they've been told all their lives that red meat is bad for you and that you need to cut the fat. So it's gonna be hard to undo a lot of that thinking and that might be what you're dealing with. Even in the face of the results that you can see that I've had from this diet and how much healthier I feel, how much better I feel, how much younger I feel, I still get people that just don't believe it and they think I'm gonna get cancer or they think I'm gonna get this or that. And I may, who knows? Who knows what I'm gonna get? I'm not gonna get out of life alive. But I do know this, I have much more life now than I did before I started eating this way. My quality of life is through the roof compared to what it was. And I don't know when I'm gonna go home to see my maker, but between now and then, I want it to be the best life I can have. And Lion Diet has helped make it the best life I can have. Walt Rotteldahl, 8632 asks, how do you gain weight on carnivore? I'm too skinny. Seems like adding milk helped me a lot, so. Try drinking a lot of milk. I drink whole milk when I did when I was doing that, and it seemed to put on a good bit of weight. I'm very active, 
and I know I've, I'm still adding muscle by doing what I do. Mostly what I did that helped help to keep my chest and shoulders and arms built was doing a lot of pull-ups and push-ups. I try to make sure to keep my, my flexibility and strength in my legs by doing air squats. I hardly ever use any weight. I do use uh, some dumbbells that I have that range from 25 to 40 pounds to do curls and tricep presses occasionally. But I also like doing dips for triceps. I find that helps me to keep the muscle up. B. Donald one asks, how much meat do you eat in a day and how often? How much meat I eat in a day varies depending on how much exercise I'm getting, how much activity I'm getting. When I get a lot more activity, I need more food. And since I've been adding fat, I've found that I need less salt than I used to have, which has been great. So I've cut it down. I used to get about 80% or more of my water mixed with salt. Now I'm probably down to about 65% of my water mixed with salt because the fat really does give you a lot of energy. As far as how much I eat, I don't weigh it, but I average probably each meal between 14 ounces and 18 ounces a meal. And I've been eating two meals a day for the most part since I've been working this, this job, but I have been doing some three meals a day. It really varies depending on how active I am. When I was less active at the beginning of this diet, there were days that I could easily just eat one meal and not even think about it because I wasn't doing enough to burn off the energy that I had. But eventually, one of the things I found very interesting about this diet is I had been wanting to exercise more. For years I talked about how I need to get out and do some walking. If I could just do 30 minutes of walking, it would do me a world of good. And it was always a bridge too far. But once I got the energy that came with doing this diet, it got to the point where if I didn't go get some exercise, if I didn't go out walking, I would feel like I was just going to come out of my skin from all the energy I had. So now I like to exercise. And that brings me to another question somebody asked. User RH1HE6NH3K asked, will eating right be enough to get me lean or will I need to exercise too? What's your routine? My routine, I'll ask, answer that one first. My routine is chaos. It is just, I'm, it's dependent on my schedule for the most part. I would love to say that I'm like Dr. Huberman and I get up and do this first thing in the morning and I do all my stretches right away and then I do these exercises and do my light therapy. But most of my days are not the same. I, I don't know what time I'm gonna be getting up half the time. And ever since I've been working graveyard shift, it's even been more bananas. I get exercise when I can. I lost most of my weight before I started exercising significantly. I don't think I started doing regular walks that were going a mile or longer until maybe August of the first year. And I started in January. Now I did do some weight training before August, but I never was, I never stuck with it. I, there was one video where I said my workout routine and it was video number one. Well, I never got video number two out because I didn't stick with the workout routine. I wish I'd have mentioned that later, but it's just one of those things that I kept thinking I was gonna get around to doing and I never did. The weight loss came without the working out. I mean, I lost a lot of weight. As a matter of fact, the first time I did a diet similar to this, I didn't add any exercise during the first six months. And the, during those six months, I lost 88 pounds. And it was Atkins diet, which is mostly meat. I did have some things that are not allowed on lion diet or even carnivore diet. At least I don't know, I don't know what all is allowed on other diets, but I know lion diet very well. And I was having mayonnaise and tuna fish, which I, I can eat that on a carnivore diet, but lion diet fish is, is not a ruminant animal. And, and lion diet, by the way, is for something different than just losing weight. Lion diet is more about dealing with autoimmune issues or gut issues and other things that you might be experiencing that doctors aren't able to help with. Lion diet has cured so many issues that I had, but some issues haven't gone away. Like I still deal with allergies, but not nearly as bad as I did before. I used to have to take heavy allergy medicine. Now I don't take any. I probably could benefit from a little bit of Claritin or something like that, but I don't like taking medicine anymore. Back to the exercise part though. I know I get sidetracked easily. Why would you not want to exercise if you have the energy? I do know from having managed a retirement home for over 10 years that inactivity will break your body down. You'll, your muscles will atrophy and you'll lose the ability to get around. There's a huge difference between people who stay active and people who are sedentary, especially as they get older. And 
once you get to a certain point, it's really hard to get it back. So you don't have to do a tremendous amount of exercise, but you gotta move. You gotta get out there and move. If you can get out and walk a mile a day, it's better than not doing anything. I always felt like I wasn't doing anything with such a small amount, so it used to discourage me. And that's why I pushed myself to go a little further. And I also like having my body be in good shape. When I was younger, I was very interested in staying in good shape. I mean, I'm a Ferrigno. <laughs> I was into the Incredible Hulk when I was a kid, so it always turned me on the idea of keeping my body in shape. I'm a Ferrigno, I should be in good shape. But I never really took care of that. And now that I've lost the weight, I said, well, hey, if I'm gonna get the fat off, I might as well put the muscle on too. And it feels good. It feels good to be strong enough to do things. You know, at 50 years old, I feel like I'm in my teens again. I do have a little more aches and pains from doing this job, but I'm doing a job that's for a younger person. And I'm thankful to be able to do it. I just wish I could get more hours doing it. I just wanted to encourage you that I'm still here and I'm still taking care of my body. And the attitude is, is I know every day I've still got to say, screw it. I'm going to get up and do it because nobody else is going to do it for you. If you don't say screw it, get up and do it, you're going to wind up sitting on that couch watching YouTube videos all day and not getting the exercise you need. So get out there and get it done. I'll see you guys next time. If we pay extra, could we maybe get some grease or fat? Sam needed the exercise. That tongue has just been hanging out. <laughs>